Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku in the sports section, one word, Dwyer Boxing News, on iTunes, same thing. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me let you into my life a little bit. It's uh, Monday morning, before 8 a.m. My girl uh, just left to go to work. Uh, she just reminded me that the kids are uh, home for the day. Uh, I've already gotten a fax from a client concerning a court filing that uh, needs to be done by 4 o'clock my time. So what am I doing? I'm actually here online with you right because I need to clear my head talk a little boxing decompress a little bit I'm gonna ramble for a little bit there are two reasons why I'm making this video the first is because I want young people I want young people to have better information than I did when I was growing up right and Google has advised me and I'm a bit surprised by this that my crowd keeps getting younger and younger right when I first started here on YouTube most of the people who watched my videos were people who were in their 30s and 40s right so those early videos you know were me talking about historical fighters and things like that right and they knew firsthand what I was talking about. The comments to a lot of the earlier videos were people who actually watched fighters like Sonny Liston, right? Well, something happened, and uh, the YouTube community has grown, and now apparently I have a lot of people who are 18 to 38 years old who watch my videos, right? Now, I remember, I'm a little older than that, you see the gray here, I remember when I was 18 to 38 or what have you, and um, I remember the misinformation I got back then. And I want to make sure that younger people, quite frankly, have access to better information than I had. Right? The second reason is because there was a day in the 1980s when I um, was watching a show. It was called Nightline. Right? The um, show was about Jackie Robinson. It was supposed to be really a celebration of um, the anniversary of either his birth or some milestone he accomplished. And the guest on the show was a Dodger executive. Jackie Robinson was a Brooklyn Dodger. It was a Dodger executive, Al Campanis. And at that time, Al Campanis on a nationally televised show on a network and keep in mind Campanis had been in the Dodger front office for several years made the statement and by the way back then you know the only people who had access to the internet were scientists right my phone back then wasn't a mobile phone right people didn't have mobile phones only multimillionaires did and for those who remember, the multimillionaires who did had big briefcases. They weren't carrying phones that fit in their pocket, right? So back then, you had very few media outlets. So I'm watching this media outlet, and Al Campanis on a show that was supposed to celebrate Jackie Robinson's life made the statement that he didn't feel that African Americans could be managers in the major leagues because, in his words, we lack the buoyancy, right? He said it's the same reason why African-Americans don't make good swimmers, right? This was, of course, before Matt Biondi lost in the Olympics to someone of African descent. Now, keep in mind, these comments were made about African-Americans lacking the buoyancy to be managers of the major leagues uh, after you know, Ralph Bunch's work with the United Nations in his Nobel Prize. This is after, you know, um, Edward Brooke was a United States Senator from the state of Massachusetts. 
right? This is after countless African-American venture capitalists had success in running businesses, etc., right? In other words, the information was so local, was so biased, that anyone who knew history, anyone who knew that Jack Johnson wasn't just a title holder, but was a patent holder, anyone who understood history knew that this was simply ridiculous. It's as if being manager of a big league team was more involved than anything any African American was capable of doing. So let's backtrack a little bit because I do believe Sergei Kovalev is a big moment for a lot of people right now. I do believe the light needs to be shined on him for a host of reasons. Let me backtrack a little bit. And obviously in boxing, he's one of the big stories of this last weekend. Right? Here's a name I want you to consider Googling. His name is James Altucher. This guy is a venture capitalist. He's been on CNBC. He's been very successful in business. More importantly, though, he's very honest. He talks about how failure is a part of the process of becoming a success. He talks about the mistakes he has made and the delusions he has had on his rise to the top. Right? And he, in a piece that is here online, openly asked the question, who really are the experts? Right? He points out that there was a time where Larry Page and Sergei Brin, the founders of Google, tried to sell their technology for a pittance compared to its market value today, right? Something like a million dollars because these guys really just wanted to be academics. They didn't want to be entrepreneurs. And the people around them, no one stepped up to buy the company. Right? Google came into existence because, quite frankly, they couldn't find a buyer. So the guys decided to do it themselves. All these wise guys out there, all these intellectuals out there, couldn't see the value of the business. Right? If you dig deep and you look into the history of Twitter, you're going to find a similar story. Right? Let me point out, Nassim Taleb. Another name you need to know, Fooled by Randomness. Really, one of the best books I've ever read in my life, right? Taleb talks about how he tried to get a publisher to publish the book. How he went around to several publishers trying to get a publishing deal. And most of them turned him down. They didn't see it. They didn't think the book had market value. The book, of course, became a runaway bestseller. Taleb's term, Black Swan, is now part of the lexicon in the investing community. Right? Understand the experts who decide what to publish at publishing houses are fallible. Right? Now, George Soros used to have a business partner. This guy truly is a visionary. You need to know who he is. His name's Jim Rogers, right? He co-founded the Quantum Fund with George Soros many years ago. Simply put, this guy is one of the most brilliant people I've ever stumbled upon. Now, Jim Rogers has a theory. He believes that the world reinvents itself every 15 years. That what you knew was true more than 15 years ago might not be true or applicable or even relevant today. Right? I want you to keep that in mind. Now let me say this. Things that we thought were true sometimes aren't. Let's talk about gender. For those of you who remember back to the 1980s. I can tell you there was an open discussion on whether women should be allowed to box as if the decision belonged to anyone but the individual making the decision. The argument was that the risk in boxing was too great. The argument was also that 
a woman's breasts weren't made to be hit. Understand the reluctance to have women involved in boxing is so great that female fighting wasn't even allowed in the Olympics until something like 2012. Right now, let me just say this. One of the best things with boxing is that boxing deals in the real world, not this theoretical world. Boxing's not looking for experts to tell us what should be, right? People want to make things happen and they just go forward in boxing. They don't believe the hype. So people might know that one of the secrets to James Tony's success was his manager, a woman named Jackie Callen. Right, Tony was in some tough fights. Jackie Callen put Tony in fights against people like Mike McCallum. And Tony was ready. Right, Michael Nunn. Tony was ready. Right, one of the secrets too. James Kirkland. <clears throat> in fact, this is even so obvious because Kirkland left her training had problems, then came back, and upon returning, returned to being James Kirkland. Is Kirkland's trainer, Ann Wolf. Right? Understand, you know, Ann Wolf herself used to be a boxer, used to be a boxer, and quite frankly, pound for pound, she probably hits harder than James Kirkland. I'm not kidding. Look at Ann Wolf films of her fighting. Now understand. Sergei Kovalev tried to get a promotional deal with the so-called experts in boxing and several promotional companies turned him down. His current promotional group is Main Events. Understand they are a predominantly female promotional group. Right, understand Kathy Duva is the head of main events. Many of her lieutenants are female. Right, at a time when the world is just allowing women to box in the Olympics, you have women right now who are promoting the career of one of the current light heavyweight champions. And understand, main events gets after it. They tried to get a fight with Adonis Stevenson. Couldn't do it. They turn around, they get the fight with the other champion, Bernard Hopkins. Right? If you're a young woman watching this video, just understand there are no limits to what you can do. You don't have to wait for some foolish Olympic committee to figure out that there's a space for you in any sport, right? Just understand that in boxing, you have women right now who are at the top. Okay, let me point out to, there's a fighter out there, Cecilia Brackus. You know, simply put, she's one of the best fighters pound for pound in the world, I believe, if she were to switch over and fight some of the guys with her defensive skills, with her ability to move, with her ability to adjust in the ring, I believe she beats some of the guys in her weight class. Right? I believe sooner or later we're actually going to have crossovers. And there's going to be interest that's not you know, just a spectacle type of interest, but really an interest on who exactly is better. Right? Just understand a sport is evolving. Whatever the hype is in the rest of the world, look at the reality. Right? Don't believe this Al Campana sentiment out there because people have agendas. Let me also switch up a little bit. Let's talk about race. Now understand it's my opinion that race 
is a social construct, right? We call Barack Obama black when genetically he's 50% non-black, right? Now, if you know your history, then you understand that the stuff people try to tell you about race is simply ridiculous. For example, I get comments here about black fighters and stuff like that. What exactly is a black style of fighting? Is it to come inside throwing big punches, not really focused on a jab, but focused on hurting the other guy, bobbing and weaving like, let's say, Joe Fraser or Mike Tyson? Is it being flat-footed from the outside and operating behind a jab, right? Like, let's say, Sonny Liston and George Foreman, focusing on power shots keyed off the jab, right? Understand, I've just named four guys who held a heavyweight title, right? Or is it, let's say, alternating? Sometimes you're up on your toes, sometimes you're off your toes, you're high volume, offensively minded, like Ray Robinson, or is it with a focus on defense? Right, where you're low volume, but very accurate, and excellent defensively, like Floyd Mayweather. Right, an argument can be made that Ray Robinson and Floyd Mayweather are two of the best fighters who've ever lived. Which style is the black style? Right? Because those guys are very different in the ring, aren't they? Let me go further. Occasionally people will write me about a Mexican boxing style, right? Before a recent fight that took place, Marco Antonio Rubio against Janady Golovkin, there were comments by the fighters that this fight was going to get Mexican all this other stuff, right? There's supposed to be some Latino style of fighting. Well, let me ask you, what, what exactly is the Latino style of fighting? Is it a Sugar Ramos style? Understand, Sugar Ramos, Boxing Hall of Famer. Great jab. Slick behind the jab. Is it that style? Is it the style of Roy Jones's idol? One of the guys who inspired Jones to fight, Salvador Sanchez, right? Who did a lot of things like Roy Jones. Or is it more of an inside type style like Julio Cesar Chavez's style? Right? What exactly is the Latino style of boxing? Right? Let's talk about Sergei Kovalev. Now, I've read some of the comments here online to earlier videos I did, and some people are accusing me of being, um, you know, anti Kovalev because he's um, you know of European descent and the idea is that I favor black fighters over European fighters like let's say Sergei Kovalev, Janady Golovkin. Right? Now I've mentioned this in other videos, but look at Kovalev's corner. Again, race is a social construct. Right? Kovalev's corner is predominantly black. Has anyone noticed that? His lead trainer is John David Jackson. Now understand, Jackson was winding down his career when Bernard Hopkins was starting his career. It was Jackson who was the champion sparring with up-and-coming Bernard Hopkins. This is before they fought years ago. Right? Understand, they would spar out of Philly. Right? Understand, later the two guys met in the ring. Understand, Jackson actually was in Hopkins' corner for multiple fights. If you believe Hopkins is black, then you'd believe John David Jackson is black. Hopkins and Jackson are running in the same circles. They're participating in the same camp. Right? Jackson was working with Brother Nassim Richardson. That's who Kovalev's trainer is. Understand, too, one of the secrets of Kovalev's success, really, was an eye opener for me this weekend. I learned a lot, is his jab. 
His jab's above average, folks. He comes in, he's actually popping the better jab in the fight. But as you look at his corner, you're going to notice that there's a older black man with gray hair. And as you look at him, he's going to look vaguely familiar. His name's Don Turner. Understand, not all of the players are in the ring in boxing. Right? Don Turner is a jab guru. He used to work with future boxing Hall of Famer Evander Holyfield. Right? I would argue that for those of you caught up on race, just understand that Kovalev has surrounded himself with African American people. Right? If I were trying to learn how to fight like a Vander Holyfield, who better to learn from than his former trainer Don Turner? Right? If I want to learn how to fight Philly style, who better to learn from than former champion, former sparring partner of Bernard Hopkins, former ring opponent of Bernard Hopkins, right, than John David Jackson, right? And so understand, you know, I view Kovalev as a fighter. I don't, I don't waste any time. I mean no time thinking about a fighter's race. What's the point? Take a look at Gennady Golovkin, by the way. His trainer is Abel Sanchez. Right? All of this, by the way, has been for years. Right? All of this hype, people who seem to believe that these guys have some kind of racial orthodoxy. That they don't blend like almost everyone in boxing are just kidding themselves. To me, they're pushing bad information just like Al Campanis. Right? Take Manny Pacquiao. His trainer is Freddie Roach. Right? His sparring partners are from all over the world. Wasn't he sparring with Victor Posto? So, the point is simply this. This isn't some political beauty contest like, let's say, the Olympics, where, you know, uh, people are in a room trying to make decisions on how the world should be. No, boxing is different. Boxing's market-based. You have game. You look exciting in the ring. You're successful in the ring. People are going to want to see you fight. Right? That's the reality. Don't waste time with the Al Campanises of the world. Don't waste time with the people pushing some ethnic line and stuff like that. Right? Just understand, Sergei Kovalev, right, is promoted by women and he's trained by African Americans. Right? There's no difference between his corner and the corner of many other fighters out there. Right? Just understand, as you look at his style, people will say, oh, that's a, that's a European style and stuff like that. You know what? The guy who beat Ricky Hatton, working behind a jab and shifty and stuff like that, I believe his name's Shashenko. Do you believe that his style mirrors Sergei Kovalev's style? Do you believe that every fighter in you know, that part of the world has the same style? I don't. You know, take the Ukraine. I would say um, Vasil Lomachenko's style is vastly different than Dmitry Perov's style, which is vastly different than Vladimir Klitschko's style. Right? Take Vladimir Klitschko. Wasn't his trainer Emmanuel Stewart? Isn't he being trained in part now by Jonathan Banks? So don't get caught up on racial story lines. Don't get caught up on how people started out. Look at where they are. Understand boxing is a very blurred sport, right? Floyd Mayweather Sr. used to train 
Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Understand Angelo Dundee trained Sugar Ramos, trained Muhammad Ali. Right? Ramos and Ali are boxing Hall of Famers. Trained by an Italian guy. Are we going to call Ramos' style the Latino style? Are we going to call Ali's style the black style? Overlooking the fact that their corners were multiracial? So, in one paragraph, let me just say, I hope the message I'm sending here to people, female, male, whatever your race, is that there are no limits in boxing. If you're waiting for some group in some room to give you permission to do something, you're in the wrong place, right? There are no limits in boxing, right? Just understand that things aren't what they seem. Right? If you're caught up on race and you believe this guy symbolizes this country and stuff like that, simply put, you haven't been paying attention. Right? This is a different sport. Even before Jack Johnson, there was Peter Jackson. Right? British Commonwealth champion, Australian champion. Right? Just understand this sport is different than any other. Right? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say this too. You know, understand that Kovalev is not the first high profile client of main events, right? Um, if there's a fault with boxing, it's that boxing doesn't advertise itself well enough. I know there's some of you who are hearing that main events is predominantly female run and own. And you're scratching your head, you're saying, wow, I didn't realize that. Right? Understand you should. Right? Understand the sport is much more diverse than is commonly discussed. Understand sometimes they're trying to sell tickets, so they take on storylines about Mexican style of fighting and all this other stuff, knowing full well that they're Mexican Hall of Fame fighters who have styles that are very different than the styles, the current styles, the styles within the last 15 years of fighters from that region, right? So don't be fooled by the hype, don't be fooled by the advertisement, right? When you look at Sergei Kovalev, understand the people behind him are practically a United Nations, right? They're people from different backgrounds, different groups coming together, and the fighter is savvy enough to realize that that's the sport he's in, right? He welcomes, you know, main events as his promoter. He welcomes a diverse corner, right? If he's not caught up on some racial agenda, then you the fan shouldn't be, right? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.